Wexler. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook and myself, Jackie Jones. And we're on episode 177. Gosh. I know. Um, So this one, the title is, we all need to develop an internal supervisor for effective psychotherapy. Another good title, Bob. Yes, it is another good time. We've missed one week, haven't we, because of the technical problems. Yes. So So apologies from both of us that we didn't manage to get one up last week, but we're back. We're back. We're back. Back. Who's that famous film person that's Arnold said, Schwarzenegger I'll be back yeah, the Terminator yes I'll be back that's the one <laughs> um, and we are so you, do you want to just say a little bit first before we go into the podcast about the conference that's coming oh yes being the done by wonderful yeah, MIT yeah. yeah the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy is doing a three-day psychotherapy conference 8th 9th and 10th uh empowerment self-agency uh, and uh, empathy is the actual title of the conference there's 36 workshops over those three days if you go to our website mcpt.co.uk you'll find all the information there or if you just put into google manchester institute psychotherapy conference the uh, website the actual website going through all the different um you know presentations are on there as well so you can pay our pay anywhere you like at the moment there's 123 people going it's a couple of weeks off so i expect there'll be 125 something like that 34 workshops we have a good social evening uh therapeutic poets there's a rock band there's a string quartet there's a gala dinner wow. all sorts of things so and it's all in sale. welcome sorry it's held in sale no it's held in the middle of manchester at a five-star hotel called the holiday inn hotel right so i got that wrong whereabouts is yeah. that in, 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 actually in manchester yeah you just catch yeah. the train to piccadilly and it's sort of like about 500 yards from the trailway station so easily accessible as well brilliant very very accessible and should be wonderful array of speakers from richard erskine myself sally orbach ruth burbeck of many different people yeah, experts you can find all that information out on the website yeah, it's all there. So I know it's late stage, but if you could come, it'd be very nice to see you there. And I'm sure it'd be a rich, stimulating, exciting experience for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's a bit of a plug from Bob. So now we go on to the podcast, which is we all need to develop an internal supervisor for effective psychotherapy. Yeah, it's taken as read that therapists need. It's also an ethical requirement anyway, uh, supervisors. Yeah. So you wouldn't be doing this job if you haven't got a supervisor. So what, what is the supervisor? What What is their job? Uh, oh, their job is to help um, uh, talk through your anxieties, talk through your perhaps knowledge gaps, talk through any problems, blocks you might have with clients uh, or take, you know, I even take uh, things to your supervisor you've done well with clients. But often people take um, issues. They and things like that. If you stood, I always used to take the clients that I felt like I wasn't getting any work with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the and supervisor's there to help you talk through your thoughts, anxieties, your knowledge blocks, um, parts that you might be doing in the process, which is causing problems with clients in terms of their effective cure so without a supervisor you are stuck in your head and may go round and round in circles and nothing much may happen so you need a supervisor to talk through all these dilemmas and ethical issues and uh, i found it a great support you know to me just to even just to go and check in but you know the, the ethics of it all if i was in you know worrying about 
should I see this client or, you know, have I got the skills for this client or whatever? I just, I, yeah, I found it nice to have somebody to check in on. Oh, from a support angle, it's really necessary. So having said all of that, what about the internal supervisor? Yes. Yeah, so this is the idea that comes from Patrick Casement, who I'm not sure if he's still alive, but he was a very famous British psychoanalyst. And I'm sure the idea of having an internal supervisor didn't actually begin with him. But he wrote a book called um, Learning from the Patient. I forget when it was in the 80s, perhaps. And I think whether it was in that book or his further book, he broached the idea that um, that we by almost by osmosis um, therapists when they go to their supervisors will take in their supervisor's wise words or their supervisor's uh, attitudes thoughts and uh, information so when they actually are with the client they've got the words of their supervisor in their heads or their being and just like clients take in from therapists their wise words and internalize a different narrative it's the same for psychotherapists with supervisors they hopefully will internalize uh, their supervisor so they can um, remember the supervisor's thoughts words and actions so they've got an internalized narrative almost like you've borrowed your supervisor yeah for yourself in the psychotherapy room and eventually the more experienced you become you'll integrate your own style as well within the internal process so he called that process the uh uh internalized supervisor that you would create an internalized supervisor in your head which comes from the model of your own supervisor so when I, I read this title, I was thinking about, I don't know, us being able to self-reflect and, you know, look at the session from a different viewpoint, if you will. Like, I don't know, like a conscience or something, you know, about, because we, we all have personal bias, which obviously it's not good if we take that into the therapy room, but being aware of it. I think... You reflect those things with your supervisor, but the process I'm talking about here is almost like having a mentor or a very significant teacher. If you go back to your school times, you might have had significant teachers. And almost without thinking about it, you take on their wise words or yeah. their model of uh, thinking or their their actions. And when you're in, you know, maybe taking your exams or whatever, so it's, it's, you, you remember the teacher's words, for example. And I think it's the same thing when you have a supervisor, that they become internal positive figures for you that you can call on under stress with clients. Because otherwise you've got no roadmap. No. You've just got your own. Yes. But is part of being a therapist, being able to self-reflect and notice where we've got gaps in how we're all learning and things. Yeah, like I think that. that's well, I think that's very, very important. And then we will need to take them to our supervisor, hopefully, to talk about the reflections, how we might be sabotaging the process ourselves, what could be going on with ourselves and the clients. And the supervisor will comment on that or help you draw out thoughts and ideas and there might be some information here's how bits that the supervisor may suggest yeah then you'll go away and maybe or not pass that on to your client yeah so with, so if you didn't have that just think about it if you didn't have someone like that um to reflect with and to talk things through and get a different perspective then you're always stuck in the same cycle with your client. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You need so, somebody to cut the cycle. Yeah. So if you've internalized the supervisor, 
you've got a different perspective to call on. See, I think that's how learning happens, by the way. I think regardless of psychotherapy, supervision, I'm only talking about this here, but even from uh, very young as children, we we learn from our parents. We take their their words, their permissions, their validations in. We internalize. That means we take on board and becomes almost like a third eye within ourselves. So then under stress or in difficult situations, we might remember those words from our parents. So we've internalized parent significant others that we can call on as if it was our own self. Yeah. If you want. Yeah. And then that happens with significant teachers. That happens with mentors. That will happen with important friends. It happen in coaching. It will happen in many different places that we internalize and keep a memory bank of those different perspectives from perhaps our own. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree with what you said earlier on about, you know, our clients take away the things that we say. I took away the things that you taught me at MIP, do you know what I mean? And I still regurgitate them now to my clients. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is, it's like those important people that are all in us and us using, like you say, that knowledge bank as and when we need it. And without that, it, it, several things would happen. We'd probably feel quite alone yeah. in the relationship with our clients. We would lack perhaps different perspectives would be able to we'd have to probably hold our own anxieties and our, our own stress would probably or could do act out from our own kind of transference yeah yeah and we wouldn't be so effective in the relationship with our clients if we didn't have an internal voice if you like um that we might want to call on yeah so I can think of many pe people I've had from Richard Erskine to Ken Evans to people who have been supervisors and consultants with me and therapists that I carry those different perspectives and words with me. And they've helped a lot in the therapy relationship. Yeah. In terms of going forward. Yeah. I think that the knowledge that you can get from a supervisor is invaluable, do you know what I mean, with whatever you take. I think the key to all of this for me is taking the important stuff to the supervisor mm. so that mm. you can get that knowledge, so that you can get that, do you know what I mean, internal supervisor in there if you're not, you know, because it's, it's a place where you can be completely honest. There's no judgment there. You know, if you're struggling, if you've got a block somewhere, if you feel like there's something going on for you, you, I don't know, you've got a cloudy judgment over something that's happened in your past. Those are the sorts of things that I think are really important to talk to your supervisor about. Yeah, absolutely. And that leads us to the next sort of query, if you like, or subject, and that is that we need to pick supervisors that um, will stretch us. Yes. Yeah. And there's a, there's a developmental growth there. Yeah. Because if we just, if we don't do that, we could end up as nice as it may be, um, simply having a cozy chat over the, and an expensive cozy chat at that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> over the Absolutely. weeks. Absolutely. And, months and, yeah. and there may not be any development. Yeah. So it's important that you get on with your supervisor, that you trust them, that they are knowledgeable. Do you know, because I know, like in the the TA world, that you need to see a TA supervisor. You can't just see any supervisor. Ah, oh, that went to a really interesting topic. You see, in the TA world, I think it's very important um, when we start out, at least, that we have find a supervisor who's got the same language. Yeah. Um, once we've qualified, of course, and done many clinical hours with clients, it may be useful to find a supervisor who has a more has a matter perspective um, position and not only understands the TA program, if you like, or language, but also comes from other um, therapeutic modalities. So 
you're always being stretched if you like i'm glad you said that because that's what i did <laughs> once yeah. i qualified or whatever i did just see a a general supervisor yeah. that had an overview of lots of different things yeah yeah and i think that is a a developmental process with for people when they feel secure enough in their ta knowledge or them whatever modality they're coming from person-centered gestalt integrative whatever it is um and they become more seasoned as a psychotherapist they may need the um you know the opportunity if you like to get or, or to seek out a therapist who a is more experienced than them and b perhaps has different perspectives from different modalities and ways of thinking yeah yeah because and the problem is you know i talk to a lot of lots and lots of therapists on my supervision certificates and they may stay with their supervisor for four five six seven years and i'm not saying don't do that if you get a you know a th something out of the supervision in terms of a developmental uh push or or growth if you want to put it that way and you still feel challenged etc cetera, etc cetera, so that's fine but sometimes people fall into the trap i think of you know i, I don't know better word than say a cozy cup of tea you know but it's all yeah. very secure and nice but actually maybe when they reflect they don't feel they've been perhaps challenged maybe uh as they'd wish yeah and the problem with that is that then the the um growth that they need uh may be thwarted yeah That's the purpose i'm talking about see for me ta has always been my grounding with everything that's underneath everything that i do in the therapy room but i i don't know whether eclectic is the right word but i have a thirst for knowledge around other types of therapy or yeah. you know different Practic ways of right doing yeah yeah eclectic's the right word yeah yeah so that's important to me then to have a supervisor that's got a different perspective than just the ta yeah have a knowledge of that like you said but to be able to bring in what works with the client mm. i couldn't agree more and I think it's a development, developmental process. So as, as we really have that fundamental bedrock of transaction analysis, for yeah. example, whether it's gestalt, person-centered, integrative, as well, and we've had those thousands of clinical hours, we, we then may feel the need to be challenged and grow as therapists with the knowledge of different modalities and perspectives. Yeah. Absolutely. I think so. Because it's it's what's best for the client. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes I, I always start off on, on transactional analysis, but then I might weave something else in that I think is relevant to the issue that they're bringing. If I think it's going to help them more, then, you know, and maybe yeah. they're understanding sometimes of how the script works, isn't there? So we need to do something else in the meantime to get them to have that way of thinking. Yeah, and also you might get a supervisor for a specialised topic. Yeah. So, for example, um, eating disorders. Yeah. Or dissociative identity disorder, or many of the neuro, many of the neurodiverse issues. Absolutely. So you, you could have two supervisors, or you could have you could teach the original supervisor, but you might want a specialist in somebody working in different areas and i think if you didn't think about it those sorts of ways you could lose out on expert knowledge yeah and then you know the, like the topic of this podcast is about us internalizing that that new yeah. knowledge and everything that we've got so then it's integrated in us so that we can use it with clients when we need to yeah and i i think the bit you said at the beginning is very important about the prerequisites of safety, security, trust, yeah. all the general templates of relational supervision. Uh, and from that place, you will be able to internalize the important, significant other yeah. in the way that you need to. I, you see, it's one of the relational needs, um, I think, in terms of human personality, that we need to have 
uh, validation and in this this aspects of my different perspectives and for, from a significant other person yeah absolutely but it, have safety security and trust with yeah and without that actually internalization it will be a much longer process because yeah. we'll only internalize positive objects really from a place where we feel safe and secure absolutely and that that just opens up for some amazing work to be done as it does with us and our clients do you know what i mean if you're on guard and there isn't any safety security and and trust there you're not going to get the work done no no and that, that's very important to remember when we choose our supervisors often i think about uh, i think about this uh very much in supervision set gifts i teach and when people come to you know learn the stuff i i teach about supervision they may report that in fact their supervisor was foisted on them by the organization wow so for example if they're nhs or wherever it is yeah. and they may not have the freedom to choose the supervisor they wish and then they find out that you know a certain supervisor has been foisted on with them i can and see that they, in organizations that somebody yeah. is employed and that's their job and that's the yeah. only option that you've got yeah and that might you know mean there's a more difficult process yeah. um when we're private and we choose uh we can have a shopping list if we like and we can choose the supervisor we want then we have more autonomy and more avenues to yes. explore to find the supervisor that fits with us yeah and i with organizations i think it'd be nice if the organization could think about it in that way and talk to the person and say look we we have some supervisors here is there any particular supervisor you would like i know it's hard in some organizations where they might not have many supervisors but um you are perfectly right if if you get on with the supervisor and you respect them there's a sense of integrity and security and safety the process is going to be more effective around internalization yeah. of that person and i think that you know to have a supervisor internally in your workplace might not be conducive with opening up <laughs> Yeah. You know, to be, whereas if it's externally done <coughs> you know, outside of work even if it's the work that employs them but they have a separate office somewhere else it just like you said it gives that autonomy it gives that mm. yeah, sense of security i think yeah yeah so i think the internalization process i'm talking about um will happen that relational templates are there and then from that place we can integrate that or those new perspectives and so in a way we then get a more um integrated identity in what i'm talking this context i'm talking about yeah i think i have from from my you know transactional analysis supervisor while i was going through my training i think i've kind of got a checklist of things that are there that mm. i'm constantly checking <laughs> do you know what i mean which is useful. I don't. I don't. I don't need to second guess certain things now. It's just it's in there. Like you said, it's programmed. And am I doing this? Am I doing that? Am I doing that? Yeah. So there's a sort of checklist. So, so it sounds like Jackie that you have internalized a lot of the information and different perspectives, maybe. Yeah. As you might hold that internalizers or significant others' words with you in times of perhaps challenges in the psychotherapy process. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that they modelled to me was that they didn't make it up. <laughs> you know, if, if I took a, an issue or a problem with them, they would say, hang on, hang fire, I'm not, I'm not too sure about this. And they would go and get a book and bring it back and then we'd look through the book together. So I always knew that if they didn't know the answers, they would find the answers and get back to me, which felt really authentic to me. Yeah, so this process of internalising our significant other person, in this case, the supervisor, I think is a, a very natural psychological process. 
and uh, an important one in growth. Yeah. But her doing that with me allowed me to then do that. No, you know, if I've got a gap in my knowledge is to get a book out. <laughs> do yeah. you know what I mean? Not yeah. think I need to know everything because I'm seeing clients. It's a learning curve. We're constantly evolving throughout our practice. Makes for a much more effective psychotherapy. Yeah. 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 So another good podcast there, Bob. Yeah, and you were talking about this because for effective psychotherapy, you need to have internalized the um a significant other person in this case the supervisor so yeah. such an important thing for us to remember in terms of support and growth yeah because we're not on our own we, we're never out there on a the limb there's always somebody you know <laughs> that's on the next rung up the ladder or even you know peer support is is useful for some it's just being able to to talk in a, a safe non-judgmental you know Mm. secure environment about things but a supervisor is mm. yeah good great so what we're going to be talking about next time bob is individual or group therapy advantages and disadvantages oh one of my favorite topics which kind of follows on from this because my supervision used to be group supervision so you can have individual supervision or group su supervision so oh, both Absolutely. Right. Until next time, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.